channel. Someone mentioned to me in chat, they think I should take my flannel stone and scrape it into a vial. I think it's a good idea. If you're new to the channel, my name is Stephen School and I am a philosopher stone alchemy researcher and enthusiast. I've been studying alchemy and manuscripts in regards to the philosopher's stone and other aspects of alchemy since about 2008. And I call this experiment my flammel stone. It is the culmination of many years of my research and experimentation. And I call it my flammel stone because it, this work reminds me of the writings of Nicholas Flamel. Flamel, Letter to Nephew, Testament of Flamel, etc. Look at that material. It's interesting. This is an alchemy experiment I've been working on for some time. This material has been through alchemical processes Some of it has been detailed in my alchemy forum on Patreon. A lot of the behind the scenes work is over there at the Stevens School Alchemy Forum on Patreon. And then a lot of it is also on YouTube. I think I'm gonna move some of these tinctures away before they get spilled. There's two main colors in my flammel stone here. The one in the center is kind of a gold color, and the stuff on the outside edges is kind of a white, whitish color. Reminding me of the term alchemist egg. probably could get a better tool for the scraping in the future. I think I'll put that on my to-do list. I chose this dish specifically for the coagulation of this stone. I bought it just for this experiment, this alchemy science experiment. And the reason why I chose this dish is because the size and shape for doing a coagulation in the, in uh, my alchemy science experiment. And this dish is dual purpose because it works in the heat and in the cold equally as well. 
since it can be placed in the oven or the refrigerator. I'm going to save this material in the glass vial for further experiment. Some people have been asking me about this work because in alchemy there are many works. And so people have been asking me if this is a work involving iron pyrite. So there are three basic realms of alchemy, animal kingdom, Mineral Kingdom, Plant Kingdom. And this particular experiment is not for consumption. This particular experiment is something I've been working on a long time with Iron Pyrite. I do have some other alchemical works going on too, because alchemy is a very deep subject. It can be confusing. So the material I worked upon when I started this experiment was iron, was iron pyrite, which is interesting, iron and sulfur. Iron and sulfur both come up a lot in alchemy. But as I said, there's different works in alchemy. And a lot of people, when they study alchemy, they get confused as to which work is which. And which manuscript goes to which work. But in the end, it turns out Alchemy is not really that difficult. What what made it difficult really was the um, the stumbling blocks in the old alchemy manuscripts. Code words were used um, to hide the real ingredients. And I do have many videos, so. If you're interested in alchemy, I wouldn't limit yourself just to this one video, but I would look at some of the other ones too, because I have many alchemy videos on different alchemy experiments. Some are in the plant realm. Some are in the mineral realm. Some are on the works of Hermes. And I had some works on the animal realm too, some of my older works. I'm going to, in the future, get back into some of the other works like the animal realm. The animal, animal realm of alchemy is actually quite interesting. Theophrastus Paracelsus and Michael Syndebogius were said to be big on the animal realm of alchemy. And I have a little funnel here that I can use for this work that might help. And I also have some labels. I'm going to label this alchemy experiment so it doesn't get mixed in with the others and confused as to what it is and becomes long since forgotten.
This material went through many alchemical processes, which are highlighted highlighted in the Stevens School Alchemy Forum on Patreon and on YouTube. I want to list it as a soluble salt, referring to it, because during the different stages of the alchemical processes, it, which were many, it went through dissolution, it was dissolved and went through uh, filters. It was dissolved and filtered and recrystallized a form of purification through dissolution and filtration and recrystallization. Crystallization is said to be a form of purification. Crystals some crystals, most of them, a lot of crystals are very pure. They can have minor impurities. When uh, crystals grow in the Earth's crust, if there are soluble salts present, it can cause an opaqueness in the crystals. If I had to try to figure what this substance is, it hasn't been sent to any laboratory for testing. I will do some testing at some point. I would say it's a soluble salt. An interesting soluble salt. I will in the future gather more of this material and add it to the vial. And as I said, I have a label I'm going to close this before it gets knocked over. And I'm going to label it too. So we don't forget what it is. I'm labeling it my flammable stone. Peeling the back off the label. Patience is a virtue. Please bear with me for a moment. Or several. It's like opening a bag at the grocery store. A plastic bag that's new. There we go. The flammel stone is labeled. Tomorrow I'm going to see about picking up some more of these flasks and as I said I'm going to start labeling them in the future so that I don't uh, forget which one is which and what they are and how they were made. So that is my flammel stone in its current state. 
it's an interesting substance, interesting color. I have more work to do with this in my experiments. This is Alchemy of Stephen's School. Subscribe for updates, not for consumption. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.